Okay. Sir, your name? Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Viren. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, seers and saints uh, over the millennium have always told us that uh, love and joy is in, uh, you know, is hardwired within our consciousness. So why do we, when we are born, we are happy children, whatever? Why do we lose it? And what is it that's going to connect it back? Beliefs. Look, here's a quick example. I come up to this woman and I say to her, I love you so much. Please marry me. And she says, no. I go back and I get a message in my brain saying, I am rejected. So I come up to another girl. Let's see this one. Please marry me. She says, no. I am super rejected. Maybe because I'm not good looking enough. Maybe I don't have enough money. Maybe I'm not capable. Now I have four labels. I'm rejected. I'm not good looking. I don't have the money. And I don't have the right job. So I go to another woman. Please marry me. And she says no. And she said yes. <laughs> so she says yes. And now I think to myself, why would she want to marry me? I'm not good looking, I don't have the money, I don't have the job, but you know what? I'll marry her. So we're getting married. Where's my wife? Hide. <laughs> so hey, so I, I'm married to her. By the back of my mind, I'm not good looking, I don't have the money, I don't have the right job or the right thing. So. She's being really nice to me, being really nice to me, telling me how great I am. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, liar. What does she want? She's just being nice to me because she feels sorry for me. She only married me because she thought that she would take care of me. I'm not good enough. So what do I do now? I want to become good enough. But I don't believe I'm good enough, so I can probably hit her make me stronger, I can go out and get drunk and come back and say to her, you know, I love you so much because I haven't got the guts to say it when I'm sober. That's what men do, a lot of men. They become like Lela Majnu when they're drunk, <laughs> right? So I can tell her this and she's saying, no, don't do this. I love you. Don't drink. Don't drink. Don't, don't, don't take drugs. Don't. I love you. And he's just saying, you know what? No, I can, I wish... I could do more. I've been rejected before, and of course at work by then he's got more rejections. Health-wise, it's probably getting bad. So all these things and patterns, and you've got Miss Nightingale, and Miss Angel, Princess, coming in his life, and he can't see it. Because the back of his mind, he's thinking, what do you know? I have more experience than you. I've lived the world. I'm successful in what I do. You know nothing. But she's saying, come on, let me take care of you. But in the back of my mind, I've labeled myself as a person rejected. Example, it could be anything. So why do we believe these things? We are all hardwired with the basic emotions. We all are. Everybody has whatever it takes within, the, within them right now. And that's not a positive thinking quote. It's a fact. Every resource you ever need in your life, ever, is within you right now. Everything. Are you accessing it? Yes, you are. But in some cases, you have what you call a block. When you have an artery block, you have a bypass later. So in this case, you have a block. I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, not good enough, got no, got no good enough. Somebody has to come and create a bypass. Nobody ever does. Because no one can do your bypass for you in this case. It has to be done by itself through real realization. So she tries her hardest and she cries at home alone, thinking, you know what? He doesn't understand. Why can't he see it? I mean, I can see it. He's such a good man. He's such a good-hearted man. People love him. People care about him. But he can't see it. And he's thinking that, you know what? There's something about my life that's missing, so I've got to take, I've got to drink. I've got to take drugs, maybe. And I come back and I speak to her badly and I tell her off because I am not good enough. It's wired into my head because my perception of who I am will detect how I, how I behave. It's quite simple. So how do I change me? She, now, after a while, she starts thinking, you know what? I don't care. I've done my best. He doesn't understand. He'll never change. So what does she do? She gives up. Then he says, see, I told you I wasn't good enough. 
she doesn't love me. She doesn't care. Because if she cared, she would have never given up on me. 20 years, and she was there for me, and I proved my point right, because I'm not good enough. That's why she doesn't care anymore. Whatever you label yourself will eventually happen, for sure. And people wonder why their lives are going through this, because they haven't got a clue. Fear, should I tell her? Should I not? Should I express? Should I not? Should I give? Should I not? And she's thinking, man, I've tried. And now when I do try, she says, go away. I don't need you. Look what a pain you've given me. You've given me such a hard time. I've been trying all my life. And she goes into a crazy eight. She's got anger, sadness, anger, sadness. He's got anger, sadness, anger, sadness. And they are both finished. They'll both go this way. We'll both go this way. They will never go this way. Relationships should not be independent. They should be interdependent. I have to rely upon her for something for me to remain connected with her. If she becomes financially independent, and I believe I'm the one that should be the man who provides in the house, and she takes that away from me, it now means that I will go into anger saying, you know what, I'm not good enough. She now has to earn her own money because she thinks I'm not good enough. Maybe she's right. And it starts labeling. I do something called timeline therapy. Anyone heard of timeline therapy? Wow, it's not very few people. Timeline therapy is amazingly powerful. Let's say she's an angry woman. And she's not angry. Actually, she can be quite angry sometimes, right? If she's an angry woman, you can go back to the first time you ever became angry, change the meaning, and it changes all subsequent meanings. So you change the first filter. Now, you may say, how can I remember the first filter? Here's a quick answer. I'll ask you a question. Think of an answer. Whatever comes to you first. When was the first time you were ever angry? Whatever's come into your mind. Whatever's come into your mind. Some people say when I was in my mother's stomach. Some people say that. I'm not kidding you. And that is the first time you got angry. It doesn't matter what the incident is, what the situation is, the date. If you change that meaning of that date, what anger meant to you, it changes all subsequent meanings. Because a filter changes, it's so easy to do. So now, because of my identity, I have now destroyed her identity. Because she's a giver, 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 giver. And I'm saying, no, 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 because I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. I know a very famous actress, I'm not mentioning her name, who I coached once a long time ago. And she has been through a whole bunch of relationships. Eventually, she met a man who was truly incredible. I met the guy, lovely guy. So they're in a relationship, she's happy as you can imagine. And six months later, she starts fighting with him. She starts fighting with him and she creates the fact that she doesn't believe she's good enough to be with a good man. She doesn't believe she's good enough. No good man would ever marry someone like me. No way. So this good man, he was a great man, loved her like mad, gives her attention, then she starts fighting with him, creating this argument. He eventually leaves her and she says, what? Not good enough. See? I was right.